What's up everybody? Welcome to Make It Custom. This video is all about my 1938 Dodge Rat Rod pickup. It's my first complete custom build by me for myself. I've built other cars for other people, but it's been a struggle to build this truck. I've started building a truck like this a few times in the past and, uh, and I never actually got to complete it. This one still isn't quite done, but it's on the road. It's been on the road for a few years, but I love it to death and the journey that it's been to get this thing where it is. All my buddies had a hand in it. I either bought and sold parts with them to make it happen or they did some work on it themselves with me. We've had a couple of uh, super late night shop pushes to get it to shows. It's just been an unreal experience. The whole deal with this truck is that I started it when I didn't have any money and I, I still kind of don't. I like to call myself comfortably broke. I heard that from a buddy. <laughs> it just means that there's always something you got to keep it moving. So the cab itself is a 1938 Dodge. I bought it for 150 bucks. It was a flower planter like rotted into the ground. Bottom of the doors were gone. Whole floor was gone. I mean this thing was like a floppy mess. The box off of it is a 1937 Chevy box. The box off of a fire pit at another buddy's place. It actually used to be my fire pit when I rented the shop there and now it's back on the truck. So <laughs> it's been a ton of work. It's been about 10 years in the making and I'm really proud of the truck. So let's just go over what pieces are in it and what it took to build it. The engine is a 1961 Corvette 283. Transmission is a four-speed Saginaw out of a 69 Chevelle. Chassis is all made of box tubing that I actually salvaged from a friend's yard. Like I said, I didn't have any money to build this thing and, and you don't have to have money to build cool stuff. You just gotta have hours of time, <laughs> lots of them. Let's check it out. So the motor's a Corvette 283. It's got uh, aluminum heads, tunnel ram intake, the exhaust manifolds here, I actually cut them off. They used to be 324 Oldsmobile speedboat manifolds, which uh, I always wanted to run them as exhaust, and I heard all kinds of horror stories about uh, not being able to do that because they're supposed to be cooled by water. But I kind of got around that by making all the runners out of quarter inch aluminum plate, and it can take the heat. So thankfully, um, you know, it, it works, and I, I don't think there's many people running them, so I really dig that. They've got flamethrowers in here. I don't know if you've seen the movie Sonic with the little cartoon character hedgehog guy. Well, this truck was in there before we redid it and they asked me to put flamethrowers on the truck as well as another hot rod. So if you check that clip out of them at the bar and Sonic's looking at, uh, at this bar called the Pit Stop, this is the truck throwing flames there. So I tried to do something a little bit different with the cooling here. You'll notice there's no radiator. The plumbing actually goes underneath the chassis all the way to the back. There's dual aluminum radiators in the back. So I got to keep this nice open kind of exposed look. It's got hydraulics for the front and rear suspension. And that's also something that I always wanted to do. I hang out with a lot of lowrider people and, uh, and I love lowriders. I think they're awesome. My brother's in a lowrider club. A lot of my friends are lowriders. And the whole thing about hydraulics, you know, like the really bouncy lowrider cars, anytime I talk about hydraulics with people, they seem to always think of those cars as they just like ride like skateboards. And, and some of them do, because they're built to hop. They've got huge dump truck coils in them so that they can smack the ground and pop up the front ends. Hydraulics aren't only riding like that. So the way that I've set up this hydraulic system, it just moves the, the spring up and down. That's all it does. It still has shocks, it still has springs. Essentially the same suspension as any hot rod. The only difference, if you come take a look, is that these two hydraulic cylinders, they push down on my leaf spring perch. So I've got, uh, I've got this little A-arm that these hydraulic cylinders connected to and it pivots down and lifts the front of the truck up. I still have a transverse leaf like your dad's hot rod or your hot rod or your kid's hot rod. And I've got old school shocks, I've got suicide steering. It rides just fine. So that's a myth about hydraulics. That's just not how they ride. They ride however you build them. So if you build them sweet, they'll ride sweet. Another thing I wanted to show you is the uh, the brakes actually. That's what we'll talk about next. These are not Buick aluminum drums like everybody runs. These are 62 Lincoln Continental brakes. A friend of mine gave them to me. He had them saved for his Model A and he never ended up building it. So he was nice enough to give me a great deal on them. So what I did was I adapted the backing plates to the backing plates of 
this axle, which is actually a Chevy van axle I got for 50 bucks from the same guy that I bought the frame rail tubing from, you know, just trying to do everything on the cheap, right? So they're all rebuilt brakes and everything and, and, uh, and they work fine. I'm looking for a new pair of drums because there's not enough meat left to machine these. The headlights here, they're kind of special. I got those at a swap meet, 25 bucks. They actually came off of an old tractor. I believe it was a Ford tractor, but I just polished up the ring, took the paint off, added some stuff. You know, you can, you can do them cheap. You'll probably find out if you watch this channel and subscribe, which you should be doing right now. I like to try and do things on a budget just because that's how I grew up, right? Next up, I wanna show you these brass steering rods. So these steering rods here, I had people come up to me and I knew that I would get this. You know, you can't use brass for steering components because the threads are gonna pull out. Well, these threads can't pull out because there's actually a steel rod inside this brass. So this is machined on my lathe. I actually used the tool post as the radius with a cutter in it to make these little radiuses all the way down. And I sleeved them over top of steel arms. I think they look awesome. Yeah, I did that actually with my, uh, my throttle linkage too. I love brass details. I love all kinds of, uh, of metal in, in their natural form. So, you know, polished brass. We got some bronze tubing. We got some brass here. You know, this is all raw steel. While we're talking about the raw steel here, I just wanna let you know what I do to coat this thing. I don't want it to rust. You know, it's a bare metal vehicle. I love the bare metal. Everybody asks me if I'm gonna paint it. No, I'm not gonna paint it. If it was to get a paint job, it would have to be a lot nicer in my, eyes I wouldn't want to just cover up there's little imperfections and I love the little imperfections that's why it's staying as it is it's true it's honest it's, it, it is what it is you know so what I do to coat it is I use a product called Gibbs brand lubricant uh, you may have heard of it before it's kind of sworn by by body people if you're gonna save metal and the reason being is that it's a non silicone based lubricant which means it's not gonna fish eye if it got painted I've actually heard of, uh, you know, farm equipment manufacturers spraying it and letting it dry before they paint, which it's weird to me, but apparently it works. It creeps right into all the pores of the metal and it doesn't have silicone in it, so it doesn't react with the paint. All right, let's uh, continue the walk around. Oh, here. <laughs> I've always wanted a magneto ignition system. I don't know why, old school dragster stuff. So I found one one time at a swap meet. That's what we've got on there. What that means is that it's actually got a generator inside of it. That's why they're so tall is they've got a little generator in there that, that makes the power for the distributor. They're a neat piece. They just look cool. I always love the look of them. They run solid core ignition wires. It's kind of just an old school thing. And while we're looking at this side, you can see this is my fuel line coming up. It's all super dirty. We've been running this truck. And it comes up here, goes through my fuel regulator, goes through the um, fuel pressure gauge comes in here and this T fitting is actually where it tees off into a couple of nitrous solenoids that are not used for nitrous. This is just my fuel pressure and it comes out of that second solenoid, comes down and splits into my exhaust. So what I have on this truck is called a standalone flamethrower system. So I actually create spark separately from the motor and I put spark and I inject raw gas into the pipes and I can make it shoot fire. We're not gonna do that right now. We'll probably cut in a couple clips of it just because it's extremely hot here. It's forest fire season. I'm sure people wouldn't appreciate me uh, throwing fireballs around today. Let's keep going, let's have a look. The windshield is, uh, is cut down obviously. I chopped it six and a half inches, pretty heavy chop. And the windshield actually used to come in and out with a crank on the dash. This truck didn't have a dash when I got it and uh, it still doesn't have a dash. So I used Model A pieces and the slider unit so that I can have my Safari front window. The chop itself was a little bit different with this one. I love chopping cars and I've chopped a few of them. And in order to go straight down with this truck and have everything line up, the front pillars are tipped in and the back pillars are tipped out. So when the chop came down, the front two quarters of the roof had to actually come in and the back two quarters of the roof had to widen out. That's because the side of the truck at the back was like this, or sorry, like this, and the front of the truck pillars were like that. So you can see it in the, in the roof here. If you take a close look, I actually had to take a little strip out right here and bring them together. And then I had to cut back here and bring them apart. And that's how I got it to line up pretty nice here. Both roof halves had to come apart this way 
in order for them to come straight down. I didn't tip the pillars or do anything funky there. Sometimes you pie cut them and move the pillars around. I didn't do that on this truck. Also because this truck was so rotten, there was nothing left of even the inner structure of the door. I've never seen it where this actually was rusted all the way up here. Usually it's just the bottom and that's bad, but this one was rusted all the way up here. So I figured why not, why not do some suicide doors while we're at it? So I wanted to do something funky with the door handles and I wanted to try carving some metal. I just wanted to try. I'd never carved any metal before like this, like, you know, artsy. So uh, I, I made these out of solid brass. I think it was one inch hex bar actually. They actually get a lot shinier than they are. Like I said, it's been kind of abused a little bit, but, uh, but these are solid brass. I just used a die grinder in 16 hours <laughs> and made these neat, neat little handles. So as we open it up here, I've got bear claw latches. I've got these, which are twisted brass square bar. A friend of mine said, why don't you try that? And, and I tried it and they worked out pretty good. Brass rivets, fish scales on my inner door panels. We got the Japanese rising sun on the seats here. I'm trying to keep with the theme of everything exposed. I just wanted a, a true, honest, hot rod that wasn't hiding anything. I have nothing against interiors. I think interiors are great. This particular truck, I'm a metalwork guy. I don't know how to do interiors. I'm not an expert painter. We've messed around with that stuff, but I'm a metalwork guy. This thing is me. It's my personality. It's You'll probably tell a lot about me by looking at it because I just I just love mechanical stuff. So I'm gonna hop in the other side and explain what's going on while Christina stays on this side. Seat belts are actually uh, I think they came in a lot of planes, but these were NOS and they were advertised as P51 Mustang replacements. So um, I didn't make them, but I always wanted a pair like that. I think they're pretty neat. So let's have a look up here. Like I said, we got no dash. So my dash is just the gauge cluster here. That's all it is. Just a, this is actually a battery box top cover that I've just drilled out and made my gauges. This is the uh, transformer, the coil for the magneto up front. Right here is all my wiring exposed. You can see it all. This is my fuse panel right here. It's all my fuses. It's funny enough, this runs the whole truck and these two pieces. The rest of this is just for flamethrowers. So on a later video, I'm gonna show you guys how I made this setup and how well it works. While we're in here, let's look at the rest of it. We've got fabricated steering column. It's built in, it's solid. We got uh, these pedals, which share a fulcrum here. This is my clutch pedal. Oh, we moved a little bit. That's my e-brake. So there's my clutch pedal, my brake pedal. They actually share the same fulcrum, the same pivot point on both pedals. And it comes over to these two links, which are spring loaded. And then I've actually got my master cylinder for my brakes right here. And I've got my master cylinder for my clutch right here. I've got my proportioning valve for my brakes right here. I've got my line lock right here. I've got my shifter right here. I've got my e-brake right here. <laughs> so everything's pretty tightly packed in here, but it works really well because uh, because it's just a good use of space, I guess. Pedals themselves are actually from the dollar store. <laughs> These are meat tenderizers. The pedals were a dollar each. The two meat tenderizers that I just cut up and shaped as the pedals, they work perfect. The shifter handle is a little bit special. A friend of mine, Cam, I used to work with him. He brought this back from Singapore and he gave it to me when he knew I was building a truck because uh, when I was young, my family, we were Buddhist, I guess. We didn't really practice it, but that's how all of our family gatherings were. My e-brake is a, uh, I believe it's a Model A e-brake. I'm not sure actually, but the handle itself, you can see it actually actuates the release mechanism for the e-brake. This is a, a pair of brass knuckles. I, there's a little story behind these knuckles. I, uh, I got in a fight with a guy at, at work one day and uh, it didn't get too far, but there's a little bit of shoving around and uh, I was really mad. So I took my anger out on a chunk of brass and I kept that in my back pocket at work for the next two months, just in case we had to uh, finish what we started. <laughs> Never happened though, which is great. Now, if you look down here, there's a little bit of extra stuff happening with the e-brake. We've got a chain mechanism here, and that was purely just to bring my pivot point down so that the e-brake cables could have a nice pull. You can see when I set this e-brake, 
pulls through the chain and pulls my actual e-brake. Now, actually, I'm gonna take the camera from Christina just for a second to show you this side. Another neat little piece. You might recognize this if you're a Jesse James fan. I grew up watching him. And this is actually a forged keychain that a friend of mine, Hakeem, he bought me this just as a little gift. It's a stainless forged keychain, says so Jesse James on it. I figured why not incorporate it into the hot rod. So that is the e-brake little pivot right there. Now the pedals themselves are drilled kind of I-beam style. We've got my gas pedal here. These wheels are a friend of mine. They're on his uh, on his brass wall. These are pulleys from a grandfather clock. That's what my gas pedal is. Little brass cover here. I can access my shifter linkage. My shifter itself is also that I-beam style. It's steel but we polished it just to make it shiny. Up here is where all the magic happens. We've got, those are the hydraulics. We've got uh, my dome light, my courtesy light, line lock, fan. Uh, I believe this is my auxiliary water pump. This is a dinky horn that I am too embarrassed to even push that button. We've got lights, keys, and this is the flamethrower panel right here. This is on, ignition, and fuel full time in case I wanna walk away from it while it's just blowing fire. And this is just momentary fuel ejection. So that's it for the inside. We got a um, cool steering wheel, a little drift wheel a friend of mine hooked me up with. I think it's really cool when you can use parts that you get from friends just because, you know, it puts a little piece of them into the truck. We'll walk around back. So like I said, radiators are in the back of this truck. So we've got uh, external fan and radiator here. There's dual rads, they're symmetrical on both sides. So dual radiators, we've got a auxiliary water pump. There's a water pump on the motor, but I put an extra one here for good measure, just in case, like cooling's important, especially when you mount them in weird locations. We had a little bit of cooling issues just because I had weak fans in the beginning. Not you guys, not you fans, just weak radiator fans. We put upgraded fans on it. We've got the auxiliary water pump. It pumps up into this water pump and out into the two fans, back out into the radiators, back down to the front of the motor. I've got a hydraulic pump for the front and a hydraulic pump for the back. They're really simple, cool, old school pumps. I love these pumps. A friend of mine traded them for a little bit of work on his bike. I helped him hard, do a hardtail. I love doing trades and all my friends, they just love helping out. So it all worked out great. These are Red's double top hydraulic pumps. I think they're from the 90s, but they work awesome. They've just got one line for each each one, all the solenoids are built into the blocks. There's no extra stuff. The dump valves, they're built in there. The slowdowns are all built in there. I've got dual batteries. The reason I have two batteries is one battery runs the truck and then the second battery just runs the hydraulics. I've got a battery isolator and a big alternator. So I never have to charge this. A lot of lowriders have a bunch of batteries in the back and when your batteries are dying, you gotta charge them. This truck is self-sufficient. It charges itself, no problem. It's never had an issue. Here are the hydraulics for the back. I've got a hydraulic cylinder right here and here, and they push up, which cantilevers on a fulcrum here. So this is my hydraulic ram. It will push up on this lever. This lever will push like this and push down on the coilovers. I'm just gonna demonstrate it. So that's how it works, and when it's up, Here's the thing, hydraulics are solid. They're a solid part of the suspension. So this is just riding on coilovers. So however good the coilovers are is how good the truck's gonna ride. So, you know, myth busted on uh, skateboard riding hydraulics. That's, it doesn't have to be that way. And, and I love it. So we've done a Watts link here to keep the rear end centered. I've got a, uh, I think it's a 1979 Camaro 10 bolt with a posi in it. That's the rear end I'm using. Just a basic gas tank, there's my fuel pump. And that's kind of it for back here. There's not a whole lot of room for groceries, but we have we have tied some firewood to the back of this when we were camping one time. So this tailgate, I never had a tailgate with the truck bed, so we made this one from scratch. And since it's so many different vehicles, you know, it's, it's probably got some Ford Chevy Dodge in it. It's, it's all over the place. It's Japan's truck now. I should probably shine that up. It's getting a little bit dull. But uh, here, let's look at the tail lights. I wanted something funky. I used to have 1958 Chevy Biscayne taillights in here. You can actually see my little patches. 
I thought it was cool because because uh, Christina's got a 58 Biscayne. I thought it was neat. But when we redid the truck, it didn't quite fit the look of the truck. So these are, I believe they're like late 1800s trolley lights. I cannot find anything on them. They were on eBay. They hinge open. They've got these little pins. I put LEDs in them. You know, the reason why I think they're trolley lights and not tail lights or anything is it's just because of how old they were. We had to put new sockets in them and everything. Maybe they're not 1800s, but like early 1900s. I don't know. If you know, put it in the comments because I don't know. <laughs> but I love them. That's it for that. The wheels on this truck are 18 inch steelies. A lot of people ask me about what the wheels are. It's no secret, or I guess maybe it is. Maybe there'll be more after this video. These are the spare tires off of Chevy Astro van all wheel drives of the mid 90s. This is the spare tire, tire saver, spare tire underneath the back of those vehicles. I had to go to four different vans to get four different ones. My rear ones have been widened two inches to get the backs a little bit fatter. And the front ones are just the stock size, like that's what you pull off of the junkyard. They're 18 inches tall. That, that way my tires could be huge, right? The proportion of this truck when I first built it with 15 inch rims and 30 inch tall tires, it looked good, but it, it was too long for how small the tires were when it sat that low. It just didn't look right. So when we redid it, these are almost 36 inches tall on the back. They're 34 inches tall in the front. Actually, scratch that. I think they're 32 on the front and 36 in the back. They're my favorite wheels right now. The logo on the door, a friend of mine did that, Creepy Keith, shout out. He, uh, he did a great job just doing a patinaed logo, Japan's Customs on the door. We did that for a show. We actually fully redid this truck about a year ago or a couple years ago to go to a local show. I had uh, been chosen by Jimmy Shine for Jimmy Shine's pick, his award of excellence at our local show. I was very honored. I had no idea that he was coming to the show. I didn't know that this was happening. I didn't even really enter it in the show. I just parked it with some friends and went about my business for the day and came back and, and heard that, uh, that he had chosen the truck and, and it was the old version of the truck. It didn't really look that good, but he was impressed with uh, the suspension and that sort of stuff. I've been looking up to Jimmy for a long time. Uh, he builds awesome vehicles, obviously uh, as a kid, he was, you know, in all the magazines, he still is, but I looked up to the guy. He's kind of like a hot rod celebrity. For him to choose the vehicle, I thought that was amazing. So the next year, and it's gonna happen every year at the Langley Cruise Inn, is Jimmy Shine's Award of Excellence. So I won it one year, and then the following year, we redid the truck because I wanted to present it the way I, I really wanted it to be. And then we picked the next winner, who's Lars. The truck that we picked was a 56 Ford. It was built by Wicked Customs, Scott Booth, locally here. and. Coronavirus happened, canceled the show for a bit, and hopefully, at the time I'm making this video, the uh, 2021 Langley Cruisin' is supposed to happen. Jimmy's supposed to come back up, and this truck's supposed to be there, and Lars' truck is supposed to be there, and we're supposed to give away an, another Jimmy Shine Award of Excellence. So I'm hoping that that all happens. It's all very exciting. Now that we're kind of wrapping up this video, I hope you enjoyed checking out my truck. I just want to give a big thank you and a shout out to another YouTuber, Path Ass Customs, Brent over there. He told everybody on his channel about us and I really appreciate that. It's helping grow our channel. I want to tell everybody about Brent because he's building some killer cars and does some great work. He's doing cars all the time. And I just want to say thank you very much and check out Half Ass Customs. That's, that's Brent over there. Thank you very much for that. That's it for this Make It Custom episode. I hope you enjoyed checking out my truck. I'm gonna hop in it and burn to the shop and go get some work done. Don't forget to hit like, click subscribe, notifications. We're here twice a week. Tell your friends. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks a lot.